Howdy, welcome to the porch. Uh, this is the Kevin Soda channel. Hope you enjoy it. I'm going to share today um, the magazine Sierra Club puts out. And it says here, um, vote like the planet depends on it. Vote like the planet depends on it. And it does. Uh, 2020 election is probably the most important election we've had in at least 100 years. Um, we have a lot of problems set up against democracy and against uh, the environment currently. And uh, I'll read a good article about the fact what's going on in America. We have minority rule in America. We've had minority rule uh, for far too long, but especially since 2010 when the uh, Republicans took over and were able to rewrite uh, the maps of many states. Uh, probably you need only 35% uh, Republicans uh, in a state to win the whole state in many situations because of how they've drawn the maps up. And this goes for Senate elections as well as presidential elections. Uh, and then local elections uh, um, in Missouri where we're at now, uh, very few people have a chance uh, to get a good um environmental laws through the state capital. Uh, we've had to take them out in uh, ballots uh, initiatives. Okay, let me read this article. It says, Minority Rule. If in environmental progress depends on a functioning democracy, we, America, may be in trouble. Here's a nightmare scenario. Come November, President Donald Trump is re-elected despite losing the popular vote by many millions. That, that happened in 2000, keeping the climate champion Al Gore out of the White House, and again in 2016, giving us the most anti-environment and most authoritarian president in modern history of the United States. There's nothing to stop it from happening again in 2020. In this election year, two vast systems upon which we rely are unraveling, the climate and our democracy. Unfortunately, one of the two major U.S. political parties is ignoring the first and actively subverting the second, undermining democratic norms, disenfranchising opponents, and opening the doors to foreign manipulation in our elections and our way of life. Two-thirds of U.S. adults think that the federal government is doing too little right now to protect the environment and prevent climate change. Just check any surveys on this. Uh, but when strong environmental or voting rights issues uh, come before legislatures uh, like in the U.S. House of Representatives, it simply dies in a Republican-controlled uh, Senate. That's because the GOP's current hold on white rule of voters greatly magnifies the party's strength. There's one Republican center, for example, for 260,000 people in Wyoming, but only one Democratic senator for 20 million people in California. In other words, um, things that are not in the Constitution uh, totally are screwing us up. Uh, no one said that you had to have the system we have today. Uh, the framers of the Constitution expected us to have reforms. Uh, of course, they made it very hard to do those reforms by uh, making 75% being necessary to change many parts of the Constitution. Uh, we need to fix this and also uh, change the Constitution in the coming years to see that uh, nature is better protected as well as humans living in the United States. Uh, in 2019, the House passed bills to return to the Paris Climate Accord, ban offshore drilling, expand voting rights, and reduce the power of money in politics. But Senator Majority Leader Mitch McConnell the self-avowed grim reaper of progressive legislation kept bills, even those with bipartisan support, from coming to vote. Nothing in the Constitution requires McConnell to act on legislation from the House or, for that matter, to hold hearings on a nominee in the Supreme Court chosen by a Democratic president or to allow witnesses at an impeachment trial. They're just norms of democratic government under which Congress has always functioned, norms that McConnell and the GOP have learned they can violate with impunity. Academics have a name for it, asymmetrical constitutional hardball. But that doesn't make it right. 
This hardball plays out in the congressional and legislative uh, redistricting that follows the decadal sentence, census. The GOP's Tea Party fueled uh, a sweep in 2010 out that allowed um, the GOP to draw radical new boundaries in a host of states. He who controls redistricting controls Congress, both to George W. Bush's uh, friend Karl Rove and the party's aptly named Red Map Project, see Partisan Monsters, from uh, the Sierra Club in March of this year. Uh, this resulted in a turnover of some, se some 700 state legislative seats across the country the following election. 700 seats. Missouri, for example, has a fairly even partisan split between Democrats and Republicans, and recent environmental balance uh, measure, measures passed in the state with 66% and 80% support. But in the past six general elections, the gerrymandering resulted in anti-environment Republicans winning twice as many state house races as Democrats. When Missourians have a statewide vote on environmental issues, the environment almost always uh, wins. But when you look at votes in the state legislature, the environment loses. That's a big disconnect. So uh, show me staters need to change this too in 2020. Can't, they cannot continue to vote against themselves all the time. Uh, the manipulator who produced the gerrymandering districts in Missouri and many other states was named Thomas Hofeller, a Republican political strategist who died uh, two years ago in 2018. Computer files obtained by his estranged daughter showed his work in numerous states to create a system wherein the Republicans nominally would automatically win. It was also Hofeller who proposed that a citizenship question be added in the 2020 census. He secretly boasted that depressing participation rates of non-citizen Latinos would be advantageous to Republicans and non-Hispanic whites. Well, that's probably true, but I don't think they vote in that big a number. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, the Supreme Court ultimately blocked the citizenship question from the census, but punted on gerrymandering, which is because they are appointed by the same GOP uh, uh, people who are undemocratic. In the latter case, a Republican member of the redistricting committee in North Carolina was quoted as saying, I think electing Republicans is better than electing Democrats, so I draw this map to help foster what I think is better for the country. It may be legal, but it's not right. Even so, the conservative majority on the court threw up its hands, declaring that the issue was too political for it to decide. I think the court's obviously too political. We're going to have to do something about that. As a result, says uh, Michael Lee, senior counsel for the Brennan Center's Democratic program, it looks like Republicans will control redistricting in some of the fastest growing, most diverse states, North Carolina, Florida, Texas, and Georgia again. You've got to be concerned that these will be a lot of aggressive gerrymandering again next time, as well as discrimination against communities of color in these states. Uh, GOP election manipulators are also preventing their opponents from voting at all. The easiest and hardest places to cast a ballot? Oh, again, many of these same states. Seven states will not allow you to vote unless you have a specific photo ID. In Texas, a license to carry a concealed handgun is suitable for voting, but a student ID is not suitable. Eight states bar felons from ever voting again. Attacks on voting rights are increasing leading up to this presidential election. In December 2019, the Associated Press obtained a record of a speech made by Justin Clark, a senior counsel to Trump's re-election campaign to top Republicans in Wisconsin. Traditionally, it's always been Republicans suppressing voters in places, he said. This year, the Trump re-election campaign and the Republican National Committee are putting another 10 million into defending their voter suppression efforts. That includes you people for us in Missouri. In February, uh, Senate Republicans blocked three election security measures, including one that would require campaigns to report uh, offers of foreign assistance to the FBI. Crazy. And intelligence officials are warning uh, lawmakers that Russia is once again trying to interfere with the election with the aim of re-electing Trump. That makes our vote this November perhaps the most important of our lives. The architecture of a republic is surprisingly easy to pull down uh, 
from within, writes uh, Russian chess grand champion and democratic activist Gary Kasparov. You never know when you, your vote will be the last meaningful one you cast. I'll say that again. You never know when your vote will be the last meaningful one cast. So please uh, get your friends to go out and vote. Uh, change Missouri. Uh, don't let these uh, anti-environmentalists run the state anymore and our country. Okay, thank you for what you can do. Thank you for sh sharing or making comments below or suggestions of where people can uh, go to be involved in campaigns to uh, uh, flip the elections around this coming year and have uh, officials who are concerned about the environment elected for a change. All right, especially here in Missouri. This is Kevin Stoda. Please tell me what you're thinking and I'm signing off.